They're pretty big drill bits. You wouldn't believe we had the driest May ever, by the way. And no, we still haven't moved house. Hiya folks, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing absolutely splendidly and that you're surviving what is probably the weirdest year of my life. Anyway, a few weeks ago, we had a look at all the different fittings that I use and kind of narrowed it down to these ones that I use on a fairly regular basis. So today I'm gonna to show you the only 15 drill bits that you ever need to own. I am, of course, joking. These are just 15 drill bits that I use on a regular basis and uh, people can get quite personal about this sort of stuff. And I would love to hear in the comments below what your favorite drill bits are. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the 15 drill bits that I use most often. And then for those who want to nerd out on drill bits a little bit, I'll go into a few of the other kind of slightly more exotic ones I use and uh, we can just have a bit geeky talk about drill bits. I do wanna point out by the way, this is nowhere near all of my drill bits. These are kind of the ones that I carry around uh, to pretty much every job with me. I've never really found the perfect way of storing drill bits, but I've found so far this does work pretty well. I'm not a big fan of like the cassette things for storing them because you invariably find that the one drill bit that you need is missing from it or you end up like snapping a bit and then you buy a packet of three and then what do you do with the other two spare ones? And over time, similar to screws and fittings and whatnot, you, your collection just evolves. But for example, I haven't got any of my auger bits in here, there, all packed up as part of the workshop move. I've got loads more just kind of normal HSS bits packed away that I need to go through and sharpen or bin, but I very rarely bin anything as you're probably aware. I'm not gonna talk very much about SDS bits in this video. I do have some SDS bits in here, but I tend to keep those separate. And what I, there's bound to be other ones that are, that are missing, but th this is kind of the bulk of them anyway. So I'll start with the smallest ones and I'll just kind of work my way up. As I say, please don't take this as like a wrong or a right. This is just my personal opinion on things. And by the way, I tend to keep my really tiny drill bits in this little cassette thing that lives in my actual drill case. So I've got like smaller bits in here, a little one millimeter bit and stuff, but I very rarely use that, they, they break so easily. So first of all, these two little HSS bits here, we've got a two millimeter one, and a three millimeter one, and they're predominantly used for pilot holes. So for example, if you're screwing a screw like that into a very hard wood or something, then you really should do some sort of pilot hole. And the pilot hole is generally based on the inner diameter of the screw, which on these is uh, pretty much three millimeters. So that's what the three mil one is for. And for slightly smaller screws, we've got the two millimeter one. The three mil one is also very handy to use as a kind of starter bit for drilling into steel. So if you're drilling into lintels and things and you're having problems, sometimes it's easier to start off with a smaller hole and then work your way up the drill bits. Depends how sharp your drill bits are really and how hard the steel is. Then we are on to, I think this is about a 4.8 or a 4.6. I wonder if I can read what it actually says on it with my dodgy eyesight. Turning 45, everything suddenly just starts breaking. I used to be able to read close-up things, no problem. Four, 4.8 it is. So we've got a 4.8 and a five mil. Any guesses what the 4.8's for? Complete with a depth stop fitted on it as well. And of course, I use that for shelf pin holes. Shelf pins are normally officially five mil, but sometimes it can just feel a little bit loose. So I prefer to start off with a 4.8 mil and worst case, I can just expand it to a five mil if needs be. 
For the pins that I generally use, I find 4.8 works really well and the pins don't just fall out of their own accord. We've then got the 5mm bit. We talked about that when I was doing the toilet roll holder. If you're ever fitting these kind of fittings onto things, these are M5 screws that go through it and invariably the holes in the thing that you're attaching onto the wall won't be big enough and you're going to have to drill them out. So that's where a 5mm drill bit is used probably most often, but really handy drill to have. Great for clearance holes in wood and all sorts of other things. So obviously all of those four are just HSS bits. I sharpen them myself. I might do a video about sharpening drill bits at some point, but there are loads of videos out there explaining how to do it. Then we're onto a couple of tile bits. Really handy to have tile bits. Only two that I use is a 6mm bit, and that is designed for your bog standard red plugs going into solid walls. And then I've also got a 10 mil tile bit as well. And the 10 mil one, I tend to use if I'm gonna be attaching things through tiles onto hollow walls so that the expanding metal anchor can get through the tile. Then on the masonry bits, I did have a much better six mil bit, but I lost it. I had like a quite a nice DeWalt Extreme one and it's vanished. So that's just a kind of cheapy one there temporarily because my decent one has disappeared off the face of the planet. That's a DeWalt Extreme one and they are really good. So really straightforward here. We've got a 5mm, a 6mm, an 8mm and a 10mm. And they are used for the 5mm for little yellow plugs, which I don't use very often. The 6mm obviously for red plugs, which I use all the time. That can also be used for duo powers as well. The 8mm is for brown plugs. Fisher ones are 8mm. You can get other ones that are 7mm, but these ones are, I can assure you, 8mm. They have 8 written on them. And then finally, the 10mm one. Don't use it very often, but if I'm doing core fix fittings and that sort of thing, they use a 10mm bit. But in all honesty, once you start getting up into bigger drill sizes like that, I would probably switch onto the SDS anyway. The 8mm one I also use if I'm using the expanding metal anchors. It's a tiny bit undersized, but I'm, I'm not going to carry around a 9mm one, especially when you can just kind of wiggle the drill a bit and make it big enough for an expanding anchor to get through. I can't remember the official size of these. Let's just check. Eight and a half. I say 9mm uh, is probably your perfect size for the expanding metal anchors, but as I say, just do, it. do an 8mm and just give it a bit of a, a wiggle in the plasterboard, it'll be absolutely fine. The 6mm one as well, I uh, use for the Fisher GP fixings as well. So that pretty much covers off everything. And yeah, the pilot holes are, are for screws into hard wood and whatnot. So then we're on to slightly more exotic bits. Here we've got a self-centering bit. These are really, really useful if you're ever drilling for like hinge holes or uh, door plates or whatever, if you wanna get a uh, drill hole or a marker hole or a little pilot hole dead in the center of another hole, then you need a self-centering drill bit. And that's all I use it for really. And I just use that to do a little marker hole. I don't use that for the full pilot hole. I just do that to do a marker hole. And then I'll drill a pilot or a clearance hole or whatever it needs to be to the, to the full depth. Of course, you're gonna need a countersink bit. I have lots and lots of different countersink bits, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm just kind of putting that one there for illustrative purposes. But countersink bits are infinitely useful. And then a couple of spade bits. I mean, you can carry a full set of spade bits, but these tend to be the only ones I use. 25 mil, if I'm running 22 mil pipes through, I don't know, joists, walls, plasterboard, whatever. And then if you're running 15 mil pipes through joists or whatever, um, it's a 19 mil bit there because it's the only one I could find. Um, you probably don't need it to be quite that big. 16, 17, something like that would be absolutely fine. But a, a 19 is all right. It's just going to be a bit of a... And then I've also got this really nice ultra sharp DeWalt Extreme 12 mil bit here. That tends to get used for if I'm, I don't know, if I'm making cabinets and a cable, like an aerial cable has to run through the cabinet or something. That gives a nice size hole, nice clean hole as well for running cables and things through units. And generally speaking, those are the drill bits that I use on a regular basis. But obviously I have a whole load of other ones in this box. So if all you wanted to know was what are the most common ones that you might need to buy as a DIYer, 
I would start off with those, but you will find over time you'll develop a collection of hundreds of drill bits. And I'm also well aware that these are, some of these are absolute rubbish and they need to be replaced. I'm gonna sort that out in a minute. So really quick whistle stop tour of all the other bits that are in here. So these are separate to, to this lot. Down here, I've got a whole selection of smaller masonry bits. These go from like really small, like three millimeter ones up to kind of five, six mil ones and whatnot. So just a selection of, they've just built up. How many masonry bits do you need? Uh, these are all double-sided screwdriver bits and Torx bits and whatnot, not very exciting. My tile bits tend to live in here. They're not tile bits, they're like screw holder things. We have got a six mil bit for porcelain tiles, but uh, that's never gonna do anything. It's like a diamond encrusted cobalt thing. Totally blunt as hell. Doubt it would work for anything, but I've just not bought a new one. Um, more tile bits, uh, not very exciting. Here's some of the more kind of exotic bits in here. A big diamond uh, cobalt type drill for, I think this is 20 mil holes in porcelain tiles. Nightmare doing that kind of drilling, but it might get you out of a tricky situation. More self-centering bits, different size self-centering bits there. Um, coring drills, they're very, very handy for making just little wooden plugs. And then, <laughs> These are so blunt. Lots of um, self-pilot holing countersink bits. So this does a pilot hole and countersink in one go. Another countersink thing and one with a broken drill bit in it. Lots and lots of different HSS bits in here, most of which are probably horrifically blunt. We've got a few kind of brad point bits and whatnot, but the trouble with brad point bits, they're great when they're brand new, but you can sharpen them, but obviously as soon as you sharpen them, they just turn into a normal drill bit then, really. I, I, they're not very easy to sharpen and keep the brad point on. I don't know, maybe post in the comments if you know an easy way of sharpening brad point bits and keeping the tip on it. But I tend to, when they get really blunt, I normally just turn it into a normal drill bit and take the brad point off because I'm too tight to just buy a new drill bit. Anyway, loads of different sizes. Complete disorganised nightmare there. I mean, this is the only problem with the way that I store drill bits, really, is that if you're looking for a specific size drill bit, this method doesn't work really well. Um, but I guess in that situation, what you could do is keep a separate cassette of drill bits where if you are likely to need like a very specific size, have a separate cassette of them where you know what each bit is. But as I say, cassettes don't really work because you end up carrying around so many different cassettes. It's just a pain in the neck I've found. Anyway, uh, lots more spade bits. Don't judge, a lot of them are rusty. And I've also got a couple of really long six mil masonry bits in there as well. Uh, these are all like sockets, so hex socket bits tend to live in here. Lots and lots of just bog standard uh, array of different random bits that I just haven't put in the bin for whatever reason, because these aren't the ones that I use on a daily basis. I've, the ones that I use all the time live in my drill box. Then we have got, of course, an, a hex key for the various, like these fit, um, these ones, and they also fit the depth stops as well, so that's just what that hex key's for. I've also got in here a couple of um, like screw removal bits. Rarely use them, they never seem to work very well. In here, bigger HSS bits and a few SDS bits live in here as well. A whole selection of SDS, smaller SDS bits live in there. So this tends to be like a bit of a mix of masonry and, and bigger HSS bits that, that live in here. And then finally, I do carry around just a selection of Forstner bits just in case, they're just cheap ones and they're nothing to write home about, but it's handy to have a selection of Forstner bits. I've also got the smaller flat bottom drill bit for hinge holes on cabinet doors. That's, as I say, that's the uh, 26 mil version. 
The bigger one that you tend to use on pretty much everything, I think I've left it in my drill press because it's not in here. I do think it's time to upgrade a couple of the bits in here and as I say it's been doing my head in for ages that I've lost my good 6mm bits. These spade bits are just embarrassingly rusty and blunt. I think it's time to go shopping. There we go, I've finally treated myself to a new set of Bosch TCT multi-construction bits. So we've got a 5, a 6, a 7 and an 8. So they essentially replace all of the masonry bits that I've just shown you. And I've bought this set of DeWalt Tri Flute Spade bits and it actually ended up cheaper buying three of them in a set than it was to buy two individually. But these basically replace the spade bits that I've just shown you. I have got a 16mm one there, which is a little bit better for 15mm pipe holes. We've got a 20mm one and we've got a 25mm one. So the 21, I probably wouldn't use that very often, but the 25 one there, mainly for running 22mm pipes and the 16 is handy for 15mm pipe holes. Anyone complaining that the bits are gonna get blunt in here because they're rubbing against each other? don't care. So there you go folks, I hope you found that useful. I think one of the key takeaways from this is uh, the drill bits that I use you can use as a kind of starting point if you literally have no idea where to start. I would also suggest having a look in the comments below because there will be other people far cleverer than me who will suggest a whole range of bits that you should probably own that I haven't even mentioned, but I just think that for the sort of work that I do and I've done over the years, I think that's a pretty good starting point. And the other thing, as I say, do double check, you know, for example, the shelf pin holes, if you use shelf pin holes and double check the size of them, double check the size of the plugs that you use and, you know, just common sense, really. I don't have to spell this out. Anyway, folks, I hope you're all staying safe and looking after each other. 2020 has been fairly weird so far, but folks, just be kind, be nice, be decent human beings, and we will come out of this and it all be hunky-dory. Take care, folks, and I shall see you next time. Teddy, bye.